Welcome to my shop. My name is Steve and in this video I'm going to show you how I take an offcut from a previous project and turn it into a pentagonal shadow box. So let's get to it. Okay, I'm at the shaper now. What I'll be, the cutter I'll be using is a Rangate multi-use cutter. I have removed the grooving knives from it and the roundover knives from, from this cutter. So essentially what I've done is I've turned this cutter into a, a, an adjustable groover cutter. Yeah, I'm going to use the Hoffman MU3 dovetail machine to uh, do the joinery on the uh, shadow box. This is already set up with the W0 bit from the last uh, videos and I'll be using the same bit to join this uh, five-sided miter box. Now this is the standard fence that comes with it. It's for 45 degree miters and but obviously that isn't going to work for a 36 degree miter so I'm going to remove this and this is one of the more useful accessories this is my own personal uh, fence it's called the synchro fence I purchased it for my MU2 and it will work on the MU3 as well and what this enables you to do is get a wide range of angles and what I'll do remember that piece we cut this I used I know that's 36 degrees so I'll just use that long long miter as a reference point to set my fence and then I'll just tighten this knob the other end of this miter is that if this piece is too short based on where I, where I need to position this, uh, my workpiece, I can use double-sided tape and use this to hold the, uh, offset the workpiece. And I've had to do that before on some of these other miter boxes that I've done. This synchro fence is very versatile. I, I mean, I've built a number of these boxes from six-sided to seven-sided to 
eight-sided and nine-sided boxes. Uh, nine-sided, that kind of reached the limit of my patience. Uh, so I probably won't ever go beyond nine. So. tight bond quick and thick and the uh, 35 millimeter or one and three eighths inch long W0 keys just a touch of glue put the rounded end first off the excess. I'll come back and get it all later with a little dental pick. And the beauty of this system is that it makes awkward clamping situations go away. I've taken the offcut from the uh, sides for the box and I'm, I've cut it in half with a Japanese pull saw and now I'm just going to straighten up one edge. I've got some eighth inch Baltic birch plywood strips and I'm going to adjust the side guides to an eighth of an inch. So the plain body is sitting on the shims and I'm adjusting the sides to get the um, I'm not sure what they call these side rails or whatever. A little wider than I need, but let's see how it works. Let's just 
stick that down and run it across and see what I get. Now the workpiece will actually end up, you know, that seems to be the right direction, the workpiece will actually end up being a little thinner than, than the three millimeter thick Baltic birch ply just because of the thickness of the um, of the tape. I may not take any off on this one. Yeah. Actually this worked really well. <laughs> Now if I could just get this off. Okay, let's see what thickness I ended up with. I was shooting for three millimeters. I knew it would be a little thinner, but I'm 2.84. 2.83, 2.83, I think that plane is a winner, so this is the Ridge City Tool Works Model HP8 Mini Block Plane. This is the Bridge City Tool Works Joint Maker Pro version 2 and I did purchase the precision fence. I need to adjust the blade tilt to 36 degrees. I'll just loosen the knob in the front and the back and I'll tilt the assembly to 36. And I'll take my spacer stock, which is just under three millimeters thick. I should be able to cut this in one pass. I need to adjust the blade height. Do that from a knob underneath. Sometimes these pieces are so smooth you can't even feel it cut. Oh, here it is. Just a tiny sliver. It provides a very smooth surface. This is a 28 teeth per inch cross cut. And what I'm going to do is use this. To in essence build the box within a box. And I think I'm just going to sneak up on this with a, I'm going to cut it a little long right now. And I've just got into that mark. Let's see where I am on the box. Maybe a little more. Let's go half a millimeter. Once I get this stop set, I should be good for all the uh, all the pieces. Need to go a little more.
And I think that's it. So let me cut a couple of more pieces and see what I see where I am. I've got my dolphins, sea service ribbon, and the strategic deterrent patrol pen. And I'm going to lay this out and drill the holes before I apply the fabric. And I'll just come off the base and line the square up to that point. And I'm just going to take a pencil and draw a line. So that's the center line. The next reference points, I'm just going to go across point to point from these, and I should, should be square there. Put these spacers in. So that looks good. Uh, I've taken the vacuum with a brush and brushed it all the same direction so that it will uh, have a uniform appearance. With these diamond point tools, I'll just put one in each corner. Hopefully I won't run out of room. And I'll just push those in. Just get them started, drive them home later. So let me get a little hammer here. So anyway, that's how I make a shadow box. And I think that will go on the mantle nicely right alongside this. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.